as you all know, I'm Melinda Zook, and I'm a professor of history and the director of Cornerstone at uh, Purdue University. And I'm hoping that uh, my remarks today will be helpful uh, to all of you. I'm going to start with a little background about why we began exploring an integrated liberal arts program, how we designed the program to meet the needs of our students, most of whom are in STEM, uh, and to answer the problems our STEM colleagues were seeing uh, with their students' fundamental skills. I also want to speak to the benefits uh, of such a program uh, for your faculty and students and a bit about how we dealt with the pandemic. And I'm going to allow plenty of time, I hope, for Q&A. So what happened to us in the College of Liberal Arts in the aftermath of the reception of recession of 2008 is not dissimilar to what happened to uh, the humanities and the social sciences across the nation. It may not have been readily felt, especially by the faculty, but it became increasingly apparent by the 2010s when that's when our enrollments began to seriously plummet. In uh, 2011, uh, the College of Liberal Arts had a total undergraduate enrollment of 4,250, which of course, you know, that's not bad. Uh, but by 2016, it was little more than half that at 2,500, with no sign of going anywhere uh, but down. Now, under those circumstances, it was very hard for the College of Liberal Arts to ask for any new faculty lines or resources. And many of us felt demoralized, trying to sell our classes uh, to students with sexy titles and fancy flyers, and still walking into half empty classrooms or seeing our classes canceled due to low enrollment or no enrollment. Yet Purdue's total enrollments were going up, up, up. Where were all the students? Well, I suppose you know. I'm sorry that this slide, uh, there we go. I'm sorry that this slide's national data only goes up to 2017. It was the most up-to-date version of the bad news I could find. It's the macrocosm, right? Um, but our reality at Purdue, the microcosm, is that Purdue is the third most STEM-centric university in the nation. Back in 2016, when I first learned how many new students each of the STEM colleges yielded every fall, I was absolutely astounded. So 2,500 new first year students in engineering, another 1,300 in science, another 1,000 in technology and youth, uh, health sciences each. But the College of Liberal Arts, around 500 and that's on a good year. So the question then becomes, how do we attract all those students that are already on campus into our classrooms? So the second context, that's the enrollment crisis being the first, the second context uh, for Cornerstone came out of my discussions in the earliest stages of developing the program with faculty in the STEM colleges. I would go to them and I would ask very simple questions. What's the biggest problems you're seeing uh, in your students' education? And how can we in the liberal arts better educate your students? And across the board, they would complain bitterly about their students' communication skills. They would say their students couldn't write, lacked interpersonal skills. And additionally, they complained about their students' lack of knowledge about the world, their little understanding of history, politics, and law. And finally, they wanted their students to take their gen ed requirements in some kind of meaningful trajectory not willy-nilly cafeteria style. So this is how Cornerstone sought to be a program that would both bolster communication skills, provide students with a broader perspective on the world, and give them a purposeful pathway by which they can complete their requirements. Purdue's Cornerstone program is now in its fourth year. In our initial trial year, 2017-18, we offered a handful of sections of our new gateway sequence, transformative text, to around 160 students. This current fall, we're offering 76 sections of transformative text 
to 2,280 students, and we're on track uh, for this academic year to teach about 4,500 students. Now, with the help of the Teagle Foundation, you can see that we scaled up the program rapidly. Our goal has always been reaching all those students across our campus and bringing them into our classes, providing them with a better liberal arts experience and perhaps inducing them to double major or minor in our degree programs. Now, the first year gateway sequence is incredibly important. We had to get all those students into the door. Transformative texts one and two allow students to fulfill their gen ed requirements in written and oral communication. Traditionally, this would have been done uh, with an English comp course, an introductory speech course, primarily taught by graduate students. But transformative text is faculty centric, largely taught by full time liberal arts faculty. Most of them are tenure track and we have a few teaching track. All of them, uh, all the faculty who teach transformative texts are accomplished scholars and teachers. Now having faculty teach your courses makes an enormous difference, especially on a campus where most of your first year STEM students uh, courses are taught by graduate students. But equally important is the content of these courses. Transformative text is centered around foundational works, readings from around the world that inspire students from Plato to Frederick Douglass to Toni Morrison. For the sake of consistency, we ask the faculty to choose at least 50% of their readings from a list of around 200 authors, but that isn't hard to do and most of us choose all of our texts uh, from that list. Now these courses teach communication skills. The first half uh, stresses written communication and the second half focuses on oral communication, which is why uh, that speech that uh, Roosevelt just talked about is so often used in the second half. Uh, but they do so uh, while reading texts uh, and forcing students to grapple with big questions. So what is truth? What is the meaning of life? Can there be justice and equality? And even more personal questions. Can I truly live an ethical existence? Uh, what is the social media and big tech uh, doing to my humanity? Uh, and why did my parents pick this major, which comes up more times uh, than not. Transformative Text uh, is a discussion-based course. Uh, it's an active learning course. Students engage the reading, the instructor, uh, and each other. And we keep them reading, writing, discussing, and presenting for a full year, honing their skills. And uh, let me add this. I want to stress how important it is to teach reading, to teach critical reading skills. We often think that students come to us with reading having been mastered, but this isn't actually the case. They read like children. And one of the first things we do in transformative texts is teach them how to read critically. Now the cornerstone faculty uh, usually pick their readings around uh, motifs. Now, not all of them do, but most of them do. So some of the themes this semester have been from ghost stories to science fiction, autobiography and the creation of the self, understanding power, heroes and legends, anger, compassion, and loving kindness, and utopia, dystopia. Now, obviously, with 69 faculty from a dozen different disciplines, there's a wide variety of approaches uh, to teaching these courses. But there are basic commonalities to each section. Instructors must teach the learning outcomes they must have a certain number of written and oral presentation assignments. They must use the author list. Everyone uses the same template for the syllabus, same course description, and follows the guidelines. And at the outset of every semester, I review every book order and every syllabus. And extraordinarily creative. And it's amazing how easy it is. We've lost the PowerPoint, I think. Uh, okay. Um, it's, um, uh, the faculty have been extraordinarily creative and it's amazing how easy it is to link foundational text to the STEM disciplines. Students have designed video games based on the Inferno. They have planned cooperative communities inspired by Boris, Moore's Utopia. In one class recently, they wrote the script and performed an episode of The Simpsons based on Antigone, and that may not have a lot to do with STEM, but it was still a good exercise. 
And another, uh, students had just read 1984 and The Handmaiden's Tale, and their assignment was to pitch a new dystopian TV series that captures the concerns and fears animating from college students today, concerns over the growth of big tech, AI, fears of autocracy, and cancel culture. Now, I expect all of you know this, but there is a, a huge delight, a real delight in seeing young people make connections, being turned on, or as one of our basketball players put it to me the other day in the parking garage, who would have thought Plato's Republic was so relevant today? There isn't any topic today that some great text hasn't already dealt with in some magnificently inspiring manner. Now, before the pandemic, faculty took their transformative text students to galleries, museums, live performances, the campus cultural centers, and movie theaters. Last spring, right before the shutdown, we organized a film fest for students centered on the Big Lebowski, wherein they compared the philosophy of the dude to the carefree Taoism of the Ganzi. Faculty took their students to theatrical performances of the Rosa Parks stories and Angels in America. And uh, one of the sections went to the new feature film, 1917. Faculty have also invited guest speakers. Uh, we've done a lot more of that since the outset of the pandemic, uh, since physically taking your students anywhere now is impossible. So faculty have zoomed in guest speakers. Usually these are authors. Uh, they've used virtual tours of galleries and online live performances. Now, of course, the latter uh, is not nearly as much fun or as memorable as a bus ride, dinner, and a show, but it's temporary. Meanwhile, we've had a great deal of success, go back one. Meanwhile, we've had a great deal of success uh, with cornerstone-wide contests, giving students greater opportunity to be creative and win prizes for doing so. And we've started our own cornerstone review of student work uh, from transformative text. Uh, this contains essays, short stories, poetry, uh, videos, and digital artwork. Um, and a lot of this came out of the contests. Uh, they were doing such a, a marvelous job in the uh, things they were submitting that we decided that we just had to publish it. Now the gateway courses are the key to success. Through them, students learn about your marvelous liberal arts faculty from the distinguished senior professor to the new assistant professor, from the sociologist uh, to the art historian. Histori uh, students will hone their communication skills, broaden their understanding of themselves in the world, and they will learn uh, the joy of learning and to appreciate, to appreciate the humanities uh, with all their attendant virtues, understanding, apathy, inspiration, and wonder. And your faculty will be given the opportunity to teach students from pharmacy to forestry and bring them into their other classes or inspire them to major, double major or minor in their discipline. Students who experience a dynamic, devoted teacher from the outset of their college career will continue to take their course or courses in their field. At Purdue, what Cornerstone has done for the 69 faculty participating, that's 69 faculty out of 268 in the college, is re-energize them. The majority love, and I'm using their word, teaching transformative texts. It allows them to leave the confines of their discipline and create a course based on the readings they've always valued, uh, create the assignments and activities uh, that they think will inspire students. And it always fills. 30 students per section every time. Cornerstone also brings your liberal arts faculty together. We hold workshops uh, pre-pandemic. Uh, those always came with a meal and they were called How I Teach This Text. Uh, we also hold receptions, wine and cheese receptions pre-pandemic. And even though now we're forced to meet in the virtual world, we have a common mission. And there's a tremendous joy that comes from being part of something bigger, of making a difference, uh, of saving your college and making a real impact across your university. Finally, we also incentivize the faculty. Through support uh, of Teagle and our college, we offered participating faculty a stipend the semester before they began teaching transformative texts. In return, they would attend uh, the workshops and prepare to teach transformative texts. Now, Cornerstone at Purdue uh, is a 15-hour certificate program. Students who take transformative texts uh, take another six credit hours, 
um, completing out their gen ed requirements. Uh, to attain the certificate, uh, which as you can see, the themes that uh, we have lined up uh, are very STEM oriented. Uh, they allow our STEM students uh, to see their discipline through a wider lens and from a different perspective. For example, uh, so in the environment and sustainability care uh, category, they would take courses on uh, global green politics or in science and technology, uh, they would take courses on the history of the space age or history of aviation. Now these themes uh, encourage students to gain uh, another competency, for example, in environmentalism. Uh, but the most concrete benefit uh, of having students take 15 hours of liberal arts coursework is the fact that they are going to hone their analytical and creative thinking skills, along with their ability to read critically, write with clarity, and speak with confidence. And of course, they're gonna learn about the world and how the things they wanna build and animate uh, might affect humanity. Now, having the certificate matters. As students pursue the certificate, enrollments in your upper level courses uh, will increase, they have uh, for us. Uh, and students also realize quite often that they're only one or two courses away from getting a minor, say, in political science or philosophy. Building the themes was not difficult. Honestly, I had that part of the program set up uh, before I ever reached out to Teagle. I simply had placed our existing liberal arts courses uh, into buckets. Since then, uh, departments have started creating courses specifically for the Cornerstone themes. So for example, the English department created a handful of courses for Cornerstone uh, with classes such as literature and technology, another on ecological literature. Uh, but that kind of, uh, of program building really doesn't require funding. The heavy lift um, is transformative text, the gateway sequence. This is where you're creating a new animal, an interdisciplinary sequence of two courses. And here you have to convince your college that it's worth the effort. Uh, and yes, uh, your faculty will be teaching new courses and uh, fewer courses in their departments because they're teaching transformative texts. So every time I teach transformative texts, there's one less history course being offered, uh, but it's worth it. And so this requires the help of Teagle. This requires the help that they can provide and the support of your administration. Uh, what we've done here as we have turned the corner, uh, we're not drowning anymore. Our heads are above the water. And uh, while none of us at Purdue are exactly doing the backstroke, uh, our confidence is up and our numbers uh, in majors and minors are up. But more importantly, uh, we're teaching a larger number of credit hours across the college. And of course, this is what Cornerstone was always supposed to do, uh, teach more students in the STEM disciplines, in philosophy and history and English courses, et cetera. So I thought you might be interested in uh, knowing what I use the Teagle money for. I used uh, the Teagle grant to incentivize uh, the liberal arts faculty to join the program in the first place, as I've already mentioned. But I also used it to pay for brunches uh, for the academic advising community here at Purdue. So that's about 400 advisors. And I would ask them to a lunch. Uh, I did this for the first three years of the program. I would provide them with a meal uh, and a little entertaining show uh, about the program uh, and Cornerstone swag. So speaking of swag, uh, I used Teagle money along with the support from my college to pay for t-shirts for the students, caps, pens, pencils, flyers, magnets, you name it. Uh, we had it and we gave it out. Um, I also use that money, by the way, uh, for uh, the meals. And I think I've said that. Okay. So, and the workshops. Uh, so the How I Teach This Text workshops came with meals uh, and I used Teagle money to support those. Um, you'll find, by the way, that your faculty are very good at teaching texts um, and they're very inspired to do so. Uh, what they may need a little help with, and this is what we often did during the workshops, uh, is with uh, teaching writing instruction and presentation skills. So, for example, Teagle money went uh, towards not only the How I Teach This Text workshops, but an August retreat. Uh, that was also with meals and workshops uh, and um, an orientation for new faculty. 
So I also use Teagle money to pay for what we call a uh, cornerstone community uh, of learning dinner uh, every August. Uh, this again was pre-pandemic, uh, in which we invited the provost, uh, the STEM deans, and administrators from uh, throughout the university. So uh, administrators in admissions and diversity, et cetera. And of course, our numerous partners in galleries, libraries, live performances. And we would break bread together and they would hear updates about the program. Now this might sound uh, a little dull, but uh, the secret here was that I would sprinkle uh, my most ardent uh, and eloquent faculty supporters at each of the tables, uh, and they would talk to the administrators or the deans about what their students were reading in transformative text and about the sheer joy of having your first year engineering student gush on and on about John Keats or uh, Frederick Douglass or George Orwell or whoever it was. So I also do a considerable amount of outreach, uh, now mostly uh, to my STEM colleagues, uh, but also partners in non-academic units. Uh, so that could be alumni or advising or anyone asks, who anyone who asks. Um, now, most of that now is, uh, well, all of that actually is uh, virtual uh, and it's not as much fun as uh, having coffee or lunch, uh, but I suspect that uh, things will go back to normal by fall 21 and I can return to the old ways of doing business. I work a lot uh, with galleries, with uh, the performing arts uh, and with libraries. And what I can offer them uh, through transformative texts uh, is access to hundreds of students. And what they can offer our students uh, are enriching experiences. So for example, uh, when the, um, our convocations brought a theatrical performance of the Odyssey uh, to Purdue last fall, um, we had our students reading the Odyssey go and 900 students uh, bought tickets. So that was a big boom for them. And what they do in return is they give us discounted ticket prices and sometimes they supply the text. So for Frankenstein, they supplied every student re reading Frankenstein when they bought uh, a theatrical performance of Frankenstein to Purdue with uh, Mary Shelley's uh, text. Now, finally to the pandemic. As shocking as it was last March and as frightening as it remains, I think the pandemic and the shutdown actually made our program stronger. We all learned, and I know all of you did too, how to conduct our classes online. And video conferencing was a lifesaver, especially for our classes, which were all discussion-based. In the spring, by trial, uh, trial by error, uh, we learned how to do this, but more so over the summer. Over the summer, uh, we offered a lot of distance learning sections of transformative text, and those faculty really honed their skills. And I asked a team of those faculty, Cornerstone faculty, to work with me over the summer on developing model online versions of the sequence. And uh, Teagle paid uh, uh, the, the stipends for those faculty to do that with Lonnie's blessing. Um, and we shared those models uh, with everyone this fall. And I think that was extremely helpful. Now, at the same time, I was also working with uh, library faculty and what we did together is we developed very short videos for the students on how to conduct research. Um, and those are now uploaded to our web page um, because we're not only doing written communication, oral communication, but we want our students to know how to go about uh, conducting research, how to formulate a research question, how to look for sources. Um, all of this was extremely important, especially as our library had shut down, but the databases, of course, were still available. So um, I'm also in uh, the early stages of two new projects. Um, we're building a comfortable book lined cornerstone reading room for students in the library. Um, and it's easy to do that now while it's shut down because we can replace the carpeting and, and put up bookshelves, et cetera, uh, quite easily. But I'm also building uh, a library uh, of E uh, transformative texts, an E library of transformative texts on our webpage. Uh, to meet the new realities of our age. And, you know, E anything rather makes me unhappy, but still uh, this seemed like the right thing to do. And um, it's so readily available, we're just pulling it uh, together. Now, finally, um, I want to mention that we're offering uh, 76 sections of transformative texts uh, this fall. 
And some of those are actually in class, physically uh, in classrooms. Some of them are hybrid. That means partially in class and partially online. Some of them are remote synchronous and some of them are online synchronous, asynchronous, excuse me. Now, um, allow me to end with a flourish. This is not easy, right? Um, but I will just say this, uh, the happiest moments for me uh, with this program have often come unexpectedly in non-cornerstone courses. So for example, right now I'm teaching medieval world. And in the course of this course, even this semester, this has happened. Uh, a student will start relating our discussion to Plato or uh, Dante. And pre-Cornerstone, I can tell you that this never, ever happened. In a million years, this never happened. Uh, but now it is happening. And I feel a little uh, sense of puffed up pride uh, because I know exactly where they got that. I know that they took transformative texts and they're relating it uh, now to uh, another course. Um, and uh, I can't tell you uh, what a feeling that gives me. Uh, and I say to myself, uh, it's working. So uh, thank you for your time. And I hope that, um, and I think we do have uh, plenty of uh, time for Q&A.